All right, homeschoolers. <laughs> Here he is, Joey Moy. Oh God, the legend. I mean, dude. I mean, I'm not even. I'll spare you guys. I'll put a link where you could go and look at the accomplishments this man has had as a producer. Uh, it's very embarrassing. How long have we worked together, you and I? At least uh, ten years. Ten years. I mean, yeah. you were one of the first guys. Yeah. I worked with in town, and then we did, it took us a while to find each other yes. again. You, you started out in Vancouver, kicking ass for many Correct. years up there. Yeah. And you moved to Nashville what year? 2010-ish. Okay, yeah. 2000, I think I started coming here in 2009, and then... What was your first smash hit as a producer? Like, what year are we talking? 99. 99. You were how old at that point? You were just a kid. Early 20s, yeah. Living the life, man. 25, something like that. Like, I got lucky out of the gate. <laughs> right away. It happened. We're like, oh, shit, this is how you do it. Well, dude, I mean, I, I've talked about you on the channel. You have crazy ears, man. I, oh, thank you. I mean, dude, we, we get so in the weeds working on shit. And, dude, we do. I'm amazed. You know, you never, I mean, I play something one time just in one little chorus somewhere that I haven't been doing on other takes, and you hear it, and I'm just like, how the <laughs> fuck did he hear that? Just that what? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Um, it's just it's crazy, a curse. Man. It's, it's incredible. And you don't listen loud. You're in here in the control room. Oh, yeah. Barely got the thing cracked. Quiet, yeah. And you're hearing all that shit. Well, you hear the details when it's quiet. Um, it amazes me, man. Uh. I'm out there with my headphones on stun, just blasting, you know, and you're in here barely listening. It's <laughs> we we got the same okay, these Morgan Wallen records we've been making. Mm -hmm. Wow, we got the same band. You like to cast bands for different projects. Correct. Right? Yes. Give us a little uh, insight on that. How do you do that? Well, this band specifically, I feel like the songwriting comes in really strong and we're we're never really tearing a song down with the studs and Yeah. I mean, if we do change chord structures because we've right. just had somebody had an idea and we're like, oh, clearly that's better, sure. you know, but you guys tend to thrive in that momentum where you hear the song and you go in there and everybody throws paint and you start working together. And that's the most fun for us to sit back and watch right. is how you guys get your own momentum going. You don't need to be lead to any, led to anything. It's right. like everybody starts coming up with ideas and then right. Brian hears something and changes what he's doing and then Jimmy jumps on that and yes. Jerry shapes his next drum fill around what you guys are doing and then yes. Dave adds a thing and compliments and it's a very uh, Let's go through each harmonious to watch. Indeed, you know? man. It is fun to be out there. Uh, let's go through each guy in this band and I want you to give, give us a quick... Uh, you know, Synopsis. Your, your favorite and your least favorite thing about each guy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with uh, Dave Cohen on the keys. Let's start. <laughs> what's he good at and what's he not good at? <laughs> Dave is a, uh encyclopedia of vintage right. keyboard right. cliches. Right. He will... You can sit with Dave for hours, and he'll scroll through like uh, DX7 every right. setting, like, yeah. duh, 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 and he'll and he'll hear the sound, and then he'll play the yeah. really famous song you know with that because sound. Sound clip. And then he'll go yeah. two more down, and he'll find the next sound. And he goes, "Oh, this is right. this song," and he'll play you that line in the song. And he can do that for days and days and days. You always talk about cliches, and you have strong feelings about cliches in music. I've heard you say many like. One-liners about cliches. What are, what are some of the things that you think about musical cliches? And, like, what does it mean to you? It to me, it means um, some musical moment that can uh, it that can make your mind go to a specific right. era right. or a specific genre. Right. Or, right. uh, but it's passive. It's not something that's explained. You just hear right. it and you think, oh man, that's you. It sounds like a, right. I don't know, early 80s Fleetwood Mac thing. You, you know? like to, I know this, you, you're not really concerned about music theory and things like that. You just like, we'll be arguing about what chords we're going to be playing. You're like, guys, just play it. I'll tell you if I like it or not. Like, <laughs> you're like, you don't really do the math. You you go when you hear something, it takes you to a place, and you're very interested in the character and the emotion that correct. That's something. That's really all that matters. Yes. The numbers on the page don't mean shit. 
Yeah, I mean, they really help you communicate, but ultimately, and you guys, I'll say how many times do I sing a wrong note, and you guys, well, that's not really a relevant note in the key, but I think you mean this. Well, let's show them a chart. See, like, show, like, let's let's look at this here. We do, all the charts here have lines, each line is numbered, and you're insistent upon that. That's a Joey Moy thing. Yeah, so I can communicate, my illiterate self can communicate. Right, so we got, chorus one happens on line four, and we have a big thing about bar four and eight, right? Let's talk, let's talk about that. Oh, yes. You're going to give away those secrets? <laughs> well, they're not secrets. <laughs> oh, I mean, Let's it's talk about that. Bar four and eight. We do. We spend a lot of time yeah. focusing you're, you're on bar four You're big on transitions. They're very important to you. Uh, let's a, talk about that. Let's talk I mean, about I feel like that's your, your primary job as a producer is to make sure each... The, the, the transition into a new section is acknowledged and you put some thought into it. And Explain that to dude in Nowheresville... Billy from Kansas? Who, does, who doesn't really know about arrangement and record producing. What does that really mean? Right. So at the end of your... Uh, how do I simplify this? So at the end of your... So here's your chorus, your eight-bar section. Yep. And, you know, halfway through, right around here, you're going to either do a drum fill, or there's right. going to be some kind of band moment, or there's going to be a guitar lick or something that right. acknowledges that four-bar section, and the transition into the next four-bar section, right? Right, right. Usually, as the song goes on, those moments grow and get bigger, right? You want, we, you want each part to deliver as it shows up. Correct. Right? Yes. Every, to- every corner you turn has to be like, oh, yeah. Right. right. Yes, a little tension, yeah. and then it releases into the next section of the song. Yeah. What are some things that you hear on p- people's records, not to mention any names, that that bother you like what what is some i know you have lots of landmines and things that you like i know you you're not real big on on uh like big open spaces i know this right. you know and like what are some other things that you that you're not into well i feel like you got a jam like you said you get a, if there's an open space at least yeah. a bar long yeah. we should put a, something memorable in there right Right. And if that's cool, we should repeat it the next time right. that bar's open. <laughs> Hooks. <laughs> <laughs> to, I, uh, I think that's really the two things. Um, you know, wasted real estate and wasted transitions. I right. think you should always make sure your transitions knock. Right. Um, it's amazing. Uh, you're great at, like, you say, like, people that can throw paint. you got guys out there that can throw yes. out ideas, and then you're great at taking the those cards that are dealt to you and right. you can shuffle them around a little bit and you can yes. say, I love what you're playing, but just change the last note. You have beautiful, right. and you're one of the few people who can actually, when I'm stuck out there or when Dave's stuck trying to, you can sing a part to us that's right. going to make, and that is so helpful, dude. I mean, a lot of people don't, they can't do that. They're, they want, they know they don't like it, but they can't tell you what they don't like. Well, see, I've been in the other seat too where you're just sitting there facing someone going like, I just, I don't know, I just don't like it. Yeah. And then you're like, uh, then Why? it's really hard to create when you're playing defense. You're now right. trying to create with that person's mind versus right. your own, right? right? And what would this person do? And what do they want? You're like, right. so I always try to at least, if I don't like something, have a counter suggestion or right. at least lead somebody down a hallway right. where they might get inspired by something. Right. Well, all right. We've covered uh, Dave Cohen. With, this is a five piece band. Oh, shit. Let's, yeah. get, let's, let's get well, into Dave. Jim- Dave made us go down so many rabbit holes here. Let's get into Jimmy Sluss, our legendary bass player. The most beloved man in all of Nashville, I would say. Would Could say? easily be the mayor of Nashville, yeah. for sure. What's great about him? What does he need to work on? Jimmy needs to work on nothing. <laughs> Jimmy needs to work on being a nicer guy. <laughs> uh, the best part about Jimmy is you really don't need to tell Jimmy anything. Jimmy will hear. Jimmy will be the first guy on the floor, and you'll be prying him out of his seat. Yeah, the hardest like, Jimmy, it's done. Just He's give me one more pass, one more pass. Total He's overachiever. Always refines yeah. his parts to the very, very end. He'll never just give you a four-bar loop. And yeah. You're stuck I'm with just it. thinking to myself, God, how many chocolate chip cookies? Oh, oh good. Just, you're going to bring them in? They're here. It's Daisy. Hi, Hi. Daisy. All right, yeah. let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, who's our acoustic player? What's that guy's name? Brian, Brian, Brian Satan. Satan. Brian Satan. Brian, Brian, Brian Satan, the great, the illustrious yeah. Brian Satan. Yes, we all got nicknames around here. We got to get into <laughs> Kurt Weatherby, too. Tell him about, well, let's do Brian first. Kurt, well, Kurt Weatherby's a legend. Yeah, first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, what is it is about? Is this Kurt Weatherby's debut on Homeschooling? Yeah, he's never, he's never been mentioned. They don't know about Jeez, Kurt Weatherby. the honor. 
Wow. Now, this is a, I'm going to close the video with the whole <laughs> Kurt Weatherby thing. The Weatherby family is yeah. <laughs> very influential people. <laughs> so, Brian, uh, what does he need to work on? What is he bring? Uh, she's, I mean, Brian doesn't have to work on anything. Like, maybe being a nicer guy. Yeah. Um, but there isn't, I don't know, you'd probably agree that there probably isn't anybody better no. on the planet than Brian Sutton. Yeah. I mean, I would say yeah. planetary, right? Yeah, yes. He's, He's getting, up there. Getting into large bodies of things like planets. Yeah, like <laughs> some might go solar systems. Like there isn't many better uh, well, yeah, than Brian it, Sutton. It's hard to believe that a guy who can rip that ferociously in the world of bluegrass can also conform to making yes. pop records. Yes. Which is really hard to believe. Yes, yes. You don't usually get that sort of uh, monumental stretch in no. somebody's, you know. It's amazing. It really is. And then when you yeah. get them in those situations where you can just, you know, if it's a bluegrass influenced track, sure. oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You'll, your jaw will drop all day. Well, you got play. a lot of horsepower on tap there. He's got yeah. a lot of horsepower. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, uh, you know, plays every instrument in there. Yep. Banjos, goddamn mandolins. Banjo, mando mandolins. instruments I've never even seen before. Yeah, stringed instruments of stringed all instruments. kinds. Stringed instruments. Yeah. Uh, he, he's a hard worker, too. He's in there busting his ass. The track mule. Yep. Total track mule. There are moments where he will completely carry the entire song, and then there's moments where he'll sit there and just play two or three things and go, I don't think I need to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, correct. I mean, you and him are out here talking about rolling patterns and shit that's so inside. I sometimes, uh, boy, did my mind wander. <laughs> You know, the other thing about him, sometimes, like, that's one guy I can spot. There's certain people I can hear on the radio or on people's records. Yeah. And there's there's just it's such a unique set of hands and yeah. skill set that he has. It, For sure. It's truly a brand. Yeah. And, and even if he is just strumming along on a song right. and not shredding, you still can hear that it's Brian. What about our big, tall, skinny drummer? Boy, Jerry he's Rowe. Tall. He's tall, isn't he? He's six foot six. Jerry is uh, comes from strong lineage. Yeah, the grandfather, grandson of Jerry Reed. Yeah, um, fine drummer. I would put him in planetary. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's the best part about Jerry is he understands music more than most drummers. So, like mm -hmm. when we're talking about our back to our bar fours and eights and sections and right. stuff, I never need to tell Jerry where he needs to put a drum fill. He's right. always like, he knows exactly. Right. what he has to do and that not a lot of people come with uh some are just great technical drummers but then some mm -hmm. don't have the musical song knowledge that Jerry yeah. has uh, this is Allie uh she puts all this shit together oh hello Allie, oh, Allie takes, we're, we're dead without Allie yeah I, I try guys I really try Allie's first appearance on homeschool no she's been on playing homeschool once before she's I been, think yeah, yeah she's been Daisy's first appearance on homeschool definitely Daisy's first appearance absolutely yes yeah. and law I think yes and law um, there's now there's one person we have yet to cover in the band. It's Kurt Weatherby. Uncle Larry. Well, Uncle Larry, but he, but he has many pseudonyms on this case. It's true. Yes. Let's let's get into that. You know. Well, it started with Kurt Weatherby, a weathered, soured, dark-souled. Yes. Pain. Pain. Pain-filled man. Yeah. Who, you would say in the old days, you'd say, "Go out there and give me some some trippy bends." And, and we uh, just go into that character, like drunk, trippy bands with crazy echoes and beers, and then we started naming that character. That guy needed a name. He needed a name. So you like to name characters, like, uh, and you I have to identify too. each yeah, individual, yeah. And start pointing out their characteristics. So Kurt Weatherby has just grown and grown in legend. I mean, we've got him. I mean, he's on a lot of these records, and his Kurt life. drinks beer before coffee in the morning <laughs> every day. <laughs> It not is. out of need, out of just preference. Yeah, you know, preference. It's not like he's got sure. the shakes or anything. Preference. He just needs that beer to get going in the morning. Oh, my God. What about this fine engineering stuff? Can you imagine doing a session without guys of that level? They're not there right now. There's Josh Blake. But, but, dude, Diddy and Sweet Ryan, boy, they're masters, right? Showing themselves sure. strong in the Lord, sure. as Jimmy Lee Slos would say. In, in, absolutely. And, and then let's finally get into this terrible artist you're working with this talent free guy can you imagine how he's so damn talented isn't he morgan oh yeah he's damn good he writes all those tunes it gets better every song sings his ass off yeah 
easiest thing for him to do in his day. Yeah. Sing. Yeah. Which and he's crazy. such a sweet dude. Yeah. We love him. We yeah. Love him. Yeah. It's a great what, project. What do, you, what do you want to tell the world that you haven't told them yet through the through the lens of the homeschooling channel? Jeez. I mean. You know, what's some stuff that's been going through your mind lately? What have you been thinking about? You're an intelligent dude. I mean, I know there's you got some wheels. I, don't, I, don't, I have, I have, I don't really have any other <laughs> profound thoughts, other than don't spook the band. Don't spook the oh, band. Tell, talk about that. Talk about that and how you got to that conclusion. <laughs> well, you can do too much. Yeah, you can do too much, especially with this crew. There's certain crews that I'll bring in that you gotta like. If we gotta tear a song down and yeah, have a lot of ideaing. Yeah. But this group, you just let them go, and yeah. then. Let the ideas flow, collect all your thoughts, and then, yeah. and, you know, step in and share your thoughts with the, with the musicians. But sometimes you can do that too soon, and then it just shuts everybody down. Right. And nobody really creates. Everybody just plays squares, right. you know, and then you don't really get any of that quality content. And that's what, that's how a producer can ruin a song. Right. And boy, yeah. we've seen it. We've seen it yeah. happen. I'm not you particularly. <laughs> no, we've had our moments, though. We've had, it took me a moment. It took me a moment. Well, you had to figure out how to work in this town. It's a different thing, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you when you were starting out with bands, I mean, you basically had to, to teach every one of those guys the parts, right? Yeah, I mean, you would surround, you'd you'd huddle up with the strongest musician and creator in the band. Right. And then you would, you know, between the two of you or three of you or however many in that dynamic were right. good, you would have to compensate for the rest of the guys who were right. still, you know, if there was a new part in a song, it's not like here where you guys feel things and they come out. Whatever you think comes out your hands. Like yeah. in those situations, if you're being creative, the musicians are usually learning how to do that on the fly, right? So you right. Just, a lot more patient and a lot yeah. more like just time allocated. Like we'd spend months making records where, right. you know, we knock out two to three songs a day with you guys, and those are clean cuts done. Just right. go back and sing them and, right. and mix them. Does is there a moment? that stands out in your mind in your early record making days where when you talk about a moment of just holy shit frustration where you grinded onto something for way too long what's the, like the longest you ever spent oh. like on one part or or like a track i mean does anything stand I mean, out yeah i mean there's tons of things where uh, I don't know. Sometimes you get into situations where maybe the song isn't what you want it to be, and then you overcompensate by putting too much on it, and then you gotta like clean it back, and then you just I don't know. It's the searching when you don't have that clear bullseye on the wall. And you don't know exactly where the song's going or what the brand of the song is, or you can spend days, weeks trying to figure it out. Have Sometimes ever, they don't come as fast as others do. Have you ever gotten a full-on just, just screaming match with a, with a band guy on a session? Oh, yeah. Back in, in the old days, have in the you? old days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, that's part of making a record. That's how I got to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> You're also a big car guy. As these guys have seen, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. what have you been looking at lately? On, I know you like spend a lot of time on bringatrailer.com. And you were talking about another site that you... Barnfinds.com. Barnfinds. Newly discovered for me. It might be old to some other people, but it's every day they send you 10, 10 cars that are yeah. sitting in a barn or like would be a barn find. Yeah. The Look great Brian Satan. Brian Satan. Look at this. <laughs> it's like holiday season at the studio. Cookies every day. Dude, we're getting into some seriously deep shit over here. It's good. We, uh, <laughs> We he made me say yeah. something negative and positive about every guy in the yeah, band. Yeah, I made it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we forgot to do, what do I need to work on the most? We forgot to do oh, that. We, well, we talked about Kurt. Uh-huh. Well, Kurt's finally been introduced to the homeschoolers. Oh, Kurt, finally. Be, and his brother, Clint. He might need his own sub channel. Yeah, Clint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Substitute teachers. The Weather Beast probably, <laughs> what was <laughs> what was Clinton Kurt's first band name? Weather Beast. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, Tongue and Groove. Tongue and Groove. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Tongue and Groove, and then they had to change it because there was another band in Ottawa with the same name. Right. So Tongue they just settled with Weatherby. Yeah. And they just went to Weatherby. And then. Uh, Use what got us here. Yeah. 
Um, what do you been looking? All right, number one on your search for cars for old cars right now. What are you been looking at? You a Mopar guy? I got my Mopar. Yeah. Currently working on a '67 Chevelle. Yeah. Dave Cohen helps you work on. Dave cars. Cohen helps me work That's on. That's pretty cars. handy with the hammer and nail. Dave. Dave actually made me. Yeah. Get into cars. Right. We we dreamt of doing it. Right. Working on cars together, and then finally we, I I bought all the tools and converted my garage. And, right. Um, geez, I don't know. You know, I almost bought a seventy. Uh, I guess it's called a Concourse. Mm -hmm. It's basically a Chevelle, but it's a station wagon. Oh, it was cool. a Super Sport. I thought that would be one of the sneakiest hot rods you. Dude, could. you bought that? I almost did. Damn. And I should have because it don't, it sold for like 16 grand. It was so Jeez. it was just good enough to like Damn. tear the engine out and put in something obnoxious and fuel injected. Amazing. I look at station wagons all the time. I love them. Yeah. Let's go, last thing and then we're going to shut the camera off. Uh this is serious. Serious. Does it involve the entire group? Uh it can. Uh but you know this record business shit inside and out and I'm fascinated by how much you you studied this stuff. The inner workings of the actual music business. Right. You're an expert. What uh, what would you use, what do you, this is deep to close the video on, but what do you see as the future of, of music? I mean, the music business, record making, a young kid moving here to be in music, what do you see in your crystal ball after studying all the metrics? You know? For a young kids, I see a lot of TikTok in their futures. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, that's the do-it-yourself approach has never been more empowered than music. So than right now. I think a lot of kids can get a lot of really strong momentum moving in that space, and they can grad. We'll, we'll, we'll graduate out of that space into a label space. I think. Yes. Do you think it's ridiculous for a young person to to try to move to Nashville to become a session player at this point? Is there enough music business left to support this type of thing? Yeah. Totally. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Totally. I feel like there's more. Well, anytime Brian decides to go on tour and Jimmy decides to go on tour with Vince Gill, then I'm like, Yo, bro. I don't even know who to hire. There yeah. tends to be space for people. And I will say, too, like, instead of letting the thought of how tight this kind of world is yeah. hold anybody back, I mean, to me, for the right people, the ones that kind of lunge at that, not to not to try to make some kind of obnoxious name for themselves, but just to know that they have a place here. You have right. to see that, you know? It's a, it's a different kind of person. What? Like the actor that goes to Hollywood. Totally. I'm gonna make Totally. Sense. As a producer, what should a young kid be working on to become a session player? Like what, what are you? That fast twitch creativity understanding the genres, not just a genre of music, but all genres of music and what the major cliches of each genre are that define those genres. Deep. And know how to pull those out of your pocket at any time and add them to a song. That's why I love and this not guy. get And not get uh, right handcuffed. Yes. That's it. Um, that, I think that goes to songwriters, producers, musicians, all of them. You gotta, you gotta have huge ears too. Don't you? You, gotta be a fan. you gotta be a student of all genres. Not just a fan, you gotta be a student. And you can't mm -hmm. just focus in on one, you gotta understand all of them. Right. And yeah, like, the historically process. too. I, I mean, I love the fact like one little thing here, double turns into a, yeah. we shim the chorus or, or whatever yeah. it is, like a fan of the process. Yes. Yeah. It's, like, it's like loving gear. Yes. And what right. one little cable or battery can do, one little pedal. Yeah. What about you? Young kid moving here to try to be. Uh, <laughs> well, he did. I yeah. did. Um, being open to any opportunity. Yeah. Just keep trying anything, doing anything. Right. That's the key. Don't turn it down. If you think you're going to be terrible at it, try it anyway. Yay. Who knows? Maybe you'll be good at it. Maybe you'll hate it. You'll right. learn something regardless. Yay. Love, right. Love it. All right. I've troubled you guys enough. Thanks for talking to the homeschoolers. Anything else, Brian? Over and out? We got to work, Tom. We got to work. Back to work. Okay. Over and out. Over and out.